Hi guys, welcome back. It's actually a great joy, a great pleasure for me to sit here and talk to you about something I've been waiting to talk to you about for a very long time. That is vaccines and what vaccines to take. I'm Dr. Santosh Jacob, orthopedic surgeon and COVID-19 physician from the city of Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. I believe that information about a disease is the first and best way in which you can win over a disease and today I'm here with information about the COVID-19 vaccine to help you do just that. As all of you know, on Jan 16th, our government started to the rollout of vaccines and it started with the health workers and all the essential personnel. After that, from the 1st of March, congratulations, the government has opened up vaccinations to those who are above 45 and you can actually go get enrolled and also get your vaccine. Now that this is done, the most important question of all, we have a choice as Indians, at least in some states, and the choice is Covishield or Covaxin. And I have been asked so many questions about what to take and what is the vaccine which you took. So today I'm also going to explain at the end of the video what is the vaccine which I took and why I took the vaccine. So let's start. Covishield and Covaxin. We are going to divide it into three parts and understand which is the vaccine which is well suited for you. So first we will see what is in the vaccine. Then we will see a little bit about the research or what is the efficacy. What did all the papers say? Then we will finally see the most important part that is the side effects and the precautions. I will be talking about what are the stuff you have to tell your doctors about. Who are, are the people who have been told by the company which produces the vaccine as to not take the vaccine. And I will also be talking about whether the vaccine is in trial phase or what the data actually means. So if you are somebody who is interested to know the science behind Covishield or Covaxin and how that can impact you, this is the video for you. And I also would like to thank Covipedia and all the authors there, all the doctors there who have taken a lot of time to compile the information which I am able to break down and simplify for you. So here goes. Let us talk about the biological components. Now, Covishield has a chimpanzee adenovirus vector, which means that the coronavirus's S protein is put inside a DNA and it is embedded inside a chimpanzee adenovirus. What is extremely essential for all of you to know is that that chimpanzee adenovirus is inactivated or killed and also its replication has been curbed. So the possibility of anything happening to you or you having an infection from the virus is almost nil. If you take Covaxin, Covaxin actually has all 29 proteins of the coronavirus, that is the strain NIV 2020-770. And this virus is inactivated and killed and used for us as a vaccine against the COVID-19. So this is what the biological component of these two vaccines are. One has a chimpanzee adenovirus with a DNA of the spike protein of the COVID-19 and the other one which is Covaxin is an inactivated COVID-19 strain which gives us immunity. Coming to the chemical ingredients, there is a reason why I will be talking about the chemical ingredients and that is because if any of you have an allergy to any of these ingredients, you can identify it. So the ingredients in Covishield are L-histidine ethanol, L-histidine hydrochloride monohydrate, magnesium chloride hexahydrate, polysorbate 80. Pay attention to this. Sucrose, sodium chloride which is salt, EDTA and water for injection. The point to be noted here is polysorbate 80, which is an ingredient in Covishield, could cause anaphylaxis or hypersensitivity reaction in a few patients. Coming to Covaxin, Covaxin has 
aluminium hydroxide gel and something known as imidazoquinolone. Apart from that, it has phenoxyethanol and phosphate buffer saline. Now you need to know that this imidazoquinolone is also known as algel IMDG, which is an adjuvant. An adjuvant is something which is required to stimulate immunity and this is there only in Covaxin, whereas it is not there in Covishield. Now that you know the chemical contents, it is also imperative that you know that Covishield and Covaxin both can be stored from 2 to 8 degrees. Let us understand a little bit about who are the companies who are developing Covishield and Covaxin and the research involved. First, Covishield. Covishield has been developed by the pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca along with Oxford University and the production of Covishield has happened in the prestigious Serum Institute of India in Pune. Now, Covishield though, the trials which have been done have been done in UK, South Africa and Brazil and those trials have been bridged as in they have fed in or extrapolated Indian variables to it and identified the safety and efficacy of Covishield. And it is also imperative to know that Covishield has completed its phase 3 trials. Now coming to Covaxin. Covaxin is produced by Bharat Biotech which is an Indian based company out of Hyderabad in collaboration with ICMR, the Indian Council of Medical Research and the National Institute of Virology, Pune. So if you look at it from a local point of view, of course, Covishield has Oxford and AstraZeneca, whereas Covaxin also has the ICMR and the National Institute of Virology, which have scientists of very high standards. Apart from that, a clinical trial, a phase two trial on 25,800 patients between the age of 18 to 95 in the Indian population. Based on these, the results of Covaxin are released. The next point which we are going to try to understand is quite a complicated thing. It is how do each of these vaccines give us immunity? Now, let us first take the Covishield because it's a new technology and it is known as a DNA technology. Now you guys have to understand one thing that we have RNA organisms and DNA organisms. RNA organisms are really primitive and DNA organisms are not. They are quite advanced. Now this coronavirus is an RNA organism. So what happens is the infective part of a coronavirus, if you take it, even though there are 29 proteins in the coronavirus, the most infective part is the spike protein. So what our scientists have done is they have created a DNA version of this spike protein of the COVID-19 and embedded it into the chimpanzee adenovirus. Now the chimpanzee adenovirus cannot infect human beings and also remember that this spike protein is a non-replicating form. It can't keep multiplying. So what happens is when this DNA which has the spike protein is injected into us, the DNA goes inside the cell, then goes inside the nucleus. All of you know that the nucleus is where our genetic material is. Once it goes inside the nucleus, it makes our DNA produce a replica of the spike protein known as complementary RNA. This is done through an organelle in our cells known as the ribosome. So the point here is we produce the spike protein which is similar to the COVID-19 in Covishield. And as a result, some studies may say that the immunity which we produce might not be as strong as natural immunity with Covishield because it comes from a DNA replica of the COVID-19 virus. So this is the mechanism through which Covishield stimulates our immunity. Now coming to Covaxin. Covaxin is pretty simple. It's like your polio vaccine. It is an inactivated vaccine. So here we take the COVID-19 virus and we inactivate it, we kill it and we make sure that it doesn't replicate. So all the proteins which are supposed to stimulate your immunity 
which are there in the coronavirus are there in the vaccine, but it is killed. Now, you must ask me, come on doc, there must be a drawback or something. There is not a drawback, but in order to use an inactivated vaccine, what we really need to do is we need to add an adjuvant into the vaccine, which would trigger this immunity. It is interesting to note that Covaxin does not have the standard adjuvant aloe, which sometimes causes hypersensitivity reactions. And they have added a new adjuvant called Algen IMDG or imidazoquinolinone. And this has much lesser anaphylaxis or side effects than the standard alum which is added in other vaccines. So this is a way in which Covaxin claims that they reduce the incidence of hypersensitivity in their vaccines. I hope it was not an overload of information, but now we know about the physical components, the chemical components, how it works, and we also know the mechanism in which it gives you immunity. That brings me to my next segment, the dosage and regimen efficacy. What do the studies say, whether they work against mutants and what the price is? Now, coming to the dosage and regimen, both the vaccines are efficacious in two doses given at intervals of four weeks each and that is what is being universally practiced. Next, let's talk about efficacy. Now, in this, you have to understand a few terms. The first term which you have to understand is a single blind study and the second term which you have to understand is a double blind study. Now, just imagine that there are two participants in a study. One is those who are being studied, which are the patients, and the others is those who are performing the studies on them, which are the doctors or the health workers. A single blind study means that the patients do not know what is the vaccine they are receiving, but the experimenters do. And a double blind study is when neither the patients nor those who are experimenting know what vaccine each of them is getting. So basically, it's just for you guys to understand that a double blind study is probably a stronger study. When it comes to Covishield, Covishield showed 70% efficacy in two doses given at intervals of four weeks. And these are from preliminary study results from UK, Brazil and South Africa. The thing is that this was done in a group of around 12,000 people and in that 12,000 people, Three of the studies which were done were single blind studies and one study which was done was a double blind study. So what they have done is they have done something known as a bridging study which extrapolates Indian values and they have come to this safety and efficacy level. And another thing which I have to mention is one study in the UK has uh, shown that the efficacy of Covishield increases when it is administered 12 weeks apart but as most trials universally have taken have been done four weeks apart the universal regimen has also been made as four weeks whereas when you come to covaxin covaxin is still in clinical trial mode but the phase one and phase two studies which involved around 350 people and the phase three studies which involved 25,800 people were double blind studies which were done in india and this found an efficacy of almost 80 percentage. I also want to explain what does this 80 percent or 71 percent efficacy mean? What it means is if there are 100 people who have been vaccinated and if they are exposed to COVID-19, then 80 percent of them will not get the infection. That is, they will not even be COVID-19 positive on test. Studies are coming out which say that when you're vaccinated, even if you get infected, the potential of you having a severe infection and landing up in the hospital is less than 1%. Until those studies come out, this is the efficacy percentage which we will have to remember. Now, then talking about the price. In India, the price of both vaccines are 250 rupees if you want to go to a private vendor and in the government, it is free. Talking about mutants it is extremely simple guys it works against the uk mutant but still we do not have any data about the other mutants namely the south african and the brazilian one the next thing which we are going to see is something very very interesting and is very important we are going to talk about the side effects and we are going to talk about the precautions which you need to take before you are going to the vaccine and i will also tell you what is the vaccine which i took and why i took it Let us go to a very important clinical part. This segment is going to be about side effects 
it's going to be about what you should clinically prepare for and who should and who should not take the vaccine and then finally i will be also explaining something about consent that is what consent for this vaccine means and what you will get if you sign this consent and finally i will tell you which vaccine i took and why i took it so here goes now first the commonest side effects are anaphylaxis anaphylaxis just means a hypersensitivity or an allergic reaction apart from that the other common ones were tenderness pain warmth redness itching swelling bruising at the injection site and generally feeling unwell apart from that many of them had stiffness in the arm fever fatigue tiredness or what we call malaise apart from that headache nausea vomiting joint pain muscle ache and body ache you must be wondering oh my god these symptoms are as bad as the covid-19 but no this happens in a very small for segment of those who take the vaccines but it is good for us to know about these side effects apart from that some of them also felt dizzy they had decreased appetite abdominal pain enlarged lymph nodes excessive sweating itchy skin and rashes now i would just like to explain to all of you why these things happen so a vaccine goes in and it just sensitizes our immune system to react to this virus if it comes back so it is like a training for our immune system say if you are going to run a marathon you know when you start training your trainer kick starts you he changes your diet he changes your exercise he reduces a lot of your unhealthy activity only then can you run a marathon so a vaccine is like your trainer waking you up and preparing you to fight or to run the marathon so this vaccine is preparing your immune system in order to fight the virus if the virus comes and that is why you have all these symptoms now coming to the precautions and contraindications now this is based on the fact sheets which are provided by both covishield and covaxin now first covishield what should you mention to your healthcare provider before vaccination pay attention guys one history of any allergies any fever if you have a blood disorder or if you're on a blood thinner like aspirin or clopidogrel next if you're immunocompromised or if you are on any medication which reduces your immunity it could be long term steroids or it could be chemotherapeutic agents then if you're pregnant or breastfeeding if you received another covid-19 vaccine or if you have any other serious health disorder you definitely have to talk to your family physician or to the vaccinator or the physician who is there if you are taking the covid shield and it's quite clear about who should not get the vaccine covid shield says that if anybody has had a severe allergic reaction after a previous dose of this vaccine you should not take it or if you had a severe allergic reaction to any of the components of the vaccine you should not take it and that is the reason why i have added all the components specifically so that none of you have a reaction now coming to covaxin what should you mention to your healthcare provider before vaccination everything similar to covishield allergies fever bleeding disorder blood thinner if you are immunocompromised pregnant and breastfeeding or if you've taken an, another covishield vaccine now covaxin also is very clear about who should not take the vaccine and this comes before release of the phase 3 trials and they say anybody who has history of allergies who has fever who has a bleeding disorder or is on a blood thinner who's immunocompromised or who's on long term drugs which reduce uh, a person's immunity pregnant breastfeeding you have received another vaccine or and if you have any other serious health disorders so basically if you want to be sure i think you should talk to your doctor if you're somebody who has comorbidities now another thing consent you know this vaccine is a choice so if you are taking covishield covishield has already completed phase 3 trials and it has been accepted so covishield does not require any consent whereas covaxin covaxin was given emergency approval before phase 3 results 
were actually completed because it had achieved very good safety and efficacy in phase one and phase two. So Covaxin is in something known as a clinical trial mode where they tell you that the vaccine is still under trial and that if you are and that you are going to be administered this vaccine as a part of a trial and you'll have to sign a consent. So what this consent means is that if you have any side effects of the vaccine, then the government will take care of your problem. And if you have any other reactions related to the vaccine, it will be managed by the government, which is doing the said study. And so Covishield is not on clinical trial, whereas Covaxin, you have to sign a consent form as it is still on clinical trial. I was basically preparing the information, trying to learn about which is a good vaccine, which I can take. And I took Covaxin for three reasons. One, it is an indigenous Indian company. Second, it uses a proven technology, which is an inactivated vaccine. And third, instead of using an adjuvant, which causes reactions, they have used a new adjuvant, which is that algel, which creates lesser side effects. And also, I have taken the Covaxin, I have taken two doses and I did not experience any side effects. And I'm not saying that just because I didn't experience, none of you will have it. This is my personal opinion and these are the reasons for which I chose the Covaxin. But I also have to add a few other things. Oxford AstraZeneca, Serum Institute of India are all reputed institutes and they, are, they have been showing very good results. In some elderly, frail people with comorbidities, Oxford AstraZeneca has caused some side effects and we are identifying if it is because of the vaccine per se. This is the information about Covishield and Covaxin. And I would really like to thank Covipedia and all the authors who made this information accessible so that I could simplify it for you guys, my viewers. And also, if you liked what you saw and the information was useful to you, consider subscribing, press the notification button and also send me any questions which you have. If I haven't cleared any of your doubts specifically, I would love to clear them further and make this concept of vaccination easily understandable to all of you. All right, guys. Bye-bye. See you. Signing off, Dr. Santosh Jacob.